Atari is a company that had lost its way for a long time. After the sale from Hasbro to Infograms, Atari had been involved with a lot of failures and, well, just plain strange ideas. They tried their hand at big budget AAA releases with licensed stuff, a reimagining of Alone in the Dark, and Grand Theft Auto clones. None of them seemed to be that well received or memorable if I'm honest. They then dabbled in the idea of having their own cryptocurrency, a line of hotels, or bed and breakfast type establishments, and they even tried to get on the cutting edge of NFTs. And all those ideas were, well, misguided to say the best, and just plain stupid to be blunt about it. But recently, there has been a major change at the company. And it all seems to stem from when company CEO, Wade Rosen, stepped aboard and took the reins. Now Atari has been buying up retro IPs and using its past to help guide its future. So let's talk about how Atari is now supporting its legacy consoles, and how that seems to be a recipe for success, and one they've been longing for for a very long time. Atari released the Atari VCS 800 a few years back, and that felt, well, just as misguided as most of their other projects. It was a set-top box for your streaming apps that could also play Atari games at an extraordinarily high price. Hardcore Atari fans, well, they purchased it, but the rest of the gaming world moved past it, and that's to be expected. It's a refreshing breath of air to have the Atari brand come back to gaming. But since the release of the Atari VCS, Atari has put out another console that seems to have been a huge success. The console I'm talking about is the Atari 2600 Plus, and it gives consumers an easy way to hook up an Atari console to their modern televisions and play all their favorite 2600 and 7800 cartridges. Now, technically, the console is dumping the ROM off of each cartridge and allowing you to play the ROM off of it. But it's still nice to be able to stick a 7800 cartridge into a console that's hooked up with HDMI to your flat screen. Older Atari consoles all used RF for their video and audio signals, and today's displays, well, they don't play too nicely with the ancient signal. Not to mention that RF looks less than ideal with its trademark static and fuzz. So the 2600 Plus lets us play all of our old favorites, which is cool. But Atari has also been releasing games for the 2600 Plus that capitalizes on their recent purchases of companies and IPs, like Atari h and Network, and they are affordable at $29.99 and $49.99 each. You can purchase and play brilliant homebrew games, which are titles that were developed by fans of Atari long after the console left the consumer market. These are games like Bentley Bears Crystal Quest, Frenzy for the 7800, and Asteroids Deluxe, again for the 7800. You can even play brand new, never before available games like Mr. Run and Jump and Bounty Bob Strikes Back, again on the 7800. And of course, they have re releases and ROM compilations available of your old favorites. <laughs> But why am I bringing this up, and what does it all mean? Well, I'm getting to what it means, calm down. Atari started by attempting to bring a new, more modern console to the masses in the Atari VCS 800, and it was mostly ignored. So instead of continuing to either put out consoles that people don't want, or focusing on the flashback consoles that we've all seen at Rite Aids, they went back to what worked. They gave people an upgrade for their old, original 2600 and 7800 consoles. They even have a new design in the 7800 Plus, and that's mainly for people that prefer the look and style of that console over the 2600. But both the 7800 Plus and the 2600 Plus play the same exact cartridges. Now, Atari has a console that people actually care about, that serves a purpose in the market. It makes playing these granddaddy video game cartridges, well, insanely easy. And it's affordable at just over $100 for the console. And they can also support said console in the old-fashioned way, in the way that us Atarians prefer, with cartridge releases of games both old and new. And this is the formula that Blaze has been using for years now, and they seem to be successful at it. People still want to collect video games, they want affordable new releases, 
and plastic to get excited for. There's a niche of collectors and gamers that still want to see a shelf full of boxes and games, and reissuing 2600 and 7800 games is brilliant in getting that done in a way that's affordable and profitable for Atari. But Atari doesn't seem ready to stop there. Rumors have it, and again, these are just rumors, but we could eventually be getting a Lynx Plus. Again, just a rumor. And heck, maybe even a Jaguar Plus isn't off the table? Well, maybe a Jaguar Mini would be better. These are consoles that are actually pretty good. They've had some great games for them, but they aren't very accessible to the public. So again, collectors and video game fans would probably be willing to slap down some cash for a more accessible way to experience the Lynx or Jaguar. Atari is using its past to fund its future, and I have to say, to this point, it seems to be working. Other gaming companies might do well to take notice to Atari's current sales model, and maybe even look at following it. I mean, how cool would it be if Namco or other companies released Atari 2600 cartridges too? And I'm sure they could re-release a lot of games and, well, make profit, as well as satisfy collectors. The 2600 Plus, well, it could do that for them. And I think even more mainstream consoles, well, they could do well by releasing their own Plus consoles. Sega Genesis Plus? Turbo Graphics Plus? Why not? But back to Atari, they have finally found their way again, it seems. And with the 2600 Plus and now 7800 Plus having compatibility with the 7800, there is a whole slew of exciting games that the wider public knows absolutely nothing about. And I bet they would love a lot of these games. Atari released Ninja Golf, Fatal Run, and Food Fight last spring on cartridge for their Plus line of consoles. And those are fantastic NES-style games that deserve to be experienced. Ninja Golf looks and sounds like a game you would have seen on The Simpsons back in the early 90s, and it's the exact dumb fun you would expect it to be. Fatal Run is sort of an apocalyptic driving game where you avoid obstacles and blow up other cars with mounted machine guns, oil slicks, smoke screens, and more. It's not really unique, as it's reminiscent of a lot of driving games from its time, but again, it's plain fun and brand new to a lot of gamers. And Food Fight is just good. It's old school and I love it. And you probably would too. Atari has had a ton of games like those in the 7800 library that they can utilize to continue bringing in gamers both old and new. Alien Brigade is a fantastic Operation Wolf style game that is incredibly fun. It's just a shame that light guns won't work on modern flat screen televisions. Planet Smashers is the sequel... a uh, prequel, maybe? I mean, I... Who knows, but it's a game related to Alien Brigade that plays completely differently from that one. It's a vertical space shooter, and it's got some unique ideas and concepts for the genre. Asteroids is a classic, but the little-known 7800 version looks pretty good, with its 3D-looking rocks and colorful obstacles, as opposed to the vector graphics of the arcade. Desert Falcon is a cool Zaxxon-style game with awesome Sphinx battles and challenging concepts. Dark Chambers was Atari's follow-up to Dandy, which of course was the inspiration to Gauntlet. And Scrapyard Dog is a fun, if not flawed, platformer that I think some people will be naturally drawn to. And the list of 7800 titles just go on and on. The point of all this was to say that Atari can support their new, old console with a ton of software that's already completed and ready to be sold. And they have a gold mine in Atari Age to sift through as well. Caverns of Mars, which was recently announced as a winner of 2024 release, was originally a homebrew from the brilliant Champ Games. Atari is poised and ready to use its past to give the company future success. And it's such a simple and brilliant idea that has been in their face all along. The timing feels right, too. And this could be the perfect storm to bring Atari back to the masses. Now, will Atari ever rival Nintendo or Sony? No, probably not, but it could craft out a very profitable and lucrative niche for themselves in the video game market. And I, one, am here for it. If you have any interest in what Atari has announced and already released regarding what we've discussed in this video, I'll have links to everything in the description. There's nothing wrong with taking some time away from the newest AAA experiences to enjoy video games in its most raw and original form. And Atari has you covered there. It's good to have Atari back, 
and here's to hoping that we'll have them in this capacity for a long time to come. But now, I want to hear from all of you. Did you know that Atari was finding success from its past? Do you think they are doing the smart thing for their company, or should they be heading in another direction? Have you purchased and played the 2600 Plus? Let me know about all this and more in the comments down below. And if you want to talk deeper about Atari, well, we have a Discord server that's free to join. Head over to the Atari Network Discord, link in the description. And I do social media too, so follow me on Twitter, X, whatever, and Instagram. Again, links in the description. And please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribing helps the channel a ton, and I appreciate it more than you could ever know. I also have a Patreon and YouTube memberships available if you want to support the channel. Members get exclusive early access to videos, and Patreons get exclusive audio updates. But both get extra content and videos, live streams, etc. Thank you to all the classy Atarians for supporting the channel. You guys rock, and I couldn't do this without all your help. And with that, it's time to wrap up another video here on the channel. I've been the 7800 Pro Gamer, a man who is perpetually stuck in the past and can't find my way out. And I'd like to thank you all for watching. And don't forget to stay classy, Atarians.